All right. Hi, everyone. Congratulations on your acceptance to Hobart and William Smith. I appreciate you joining us via Zoom this afternoon to discuss the Guaranteed Internship Program. Before we get started, I'd like to ask everyone to keep their microphones on mute. The session is being recorded, and we would like to limit extra noise as much as possible. Any questions you have can be, via, can be submitted via the chat feature, and we will answer them later in the session. So uh, my name is Lex Snipper. I'm originally from the Finger Lakes area and my hometown is not too far from campus. I'll graduate this May with a media and society degree and I also have a minor in entrepreneurial studies. On campus, I've been heavily involved with the career for, with the Center for Community Engagement and Service Learning, volunteering through days of service, coordinating the Geneva Heroes Mentorship Program and holding a civic leader position in the office. In the summer of 2018, I completed the Centennial Center's Summer Sandbox Program. And in 2019 and this year as well, I was a finalist in the annual pitch competition with my startup, CanAdapt, an online cancer connection community for patients, survivors, and caregivers. These experiences paved the way for my TEDx youth talk that I gave uh, at Beacon Street in Massachusetts, and it was on my nonprofit venture. Over the course of my time at HWS, I've worked in the Office of Communications as a student writer, the Office of Advancement as a stewardship intern and a reunion worker, as well as the Center for Teaching and Learning as a research assistant. Off campus, I've had a handful of internship positions. At the Fred L. Emerson Foundation, I helped implement a data ma management software program I managed the social media presence of Studio Salon and Spa here in Geneva, and I wrote news articles and assisted with social media for the Gildas Club of Rochester chapter. I'm excited to officially kick off our presentation and help you learn more about career services. Brandy, could you tell us about your background and how a student interacts with you as well as the office once they get to campus? Absolutely. Thanks so much, Lex. And for everyone on the call, Lex, obviously graduating senior, has taken advantage of so many opportunities. And I hope that that's one thing that you will take away from all of your presentations is the magnitude and the, the um, quantity of opportunities that you have um, at your disposal. And really, you can make what you want of these four years. And Lex has done a really great job of doing that. And the, the one thing that she didn't mention is that she's also employed. So she has a job that she will be going into um, after she graduates. Um, and that is through one of our great alumni connections. And so that's another piece that I will talk about. Um, but a little bit about me, I've been here for 21 years, which is crazy to say out loud. Um, and it's been really nice to see how the Career Center has grown and, and the way that we serve students. Um, and so I work with students in various capacities in, on campus. So I do some of the pre-law advising through career services. I help with graduate school. I do some of the employer development, but also do some of the career counseling and career coaching. So when you need a resume or you need help in prepping for an interview, I work with a lot of students on those areas as well. Um, and I think one thing that our career center is really good at is not waiting for you to need us. We're really proactive in pushing out to students and really making sure that, um, that you know what's going on and we work to engage you early on. So as first years, when you come to Hobart and William Smith, you have an orientation. But in addition to that, you have an extension of orientation where you meet once a week for six weeks to cover additional topics because it's just too much to do in one weekend. And so one of those sessions is all about career services and you'll get to meet us. We'll talk about more in detail, the guaranteed internship funding. We'll introduce you to Handshake, our online platform and really help engage you early on. Career services is not required of any student but I think what you'll find is that it really is sort of embedded in the culture of who we are. And so because of that, in most years, obviously the pandemic this year is a little bit different, but in most years we meet in person with about 60% of the first years during their first year here on campus. Whether it is helping you figure out what you want to do, um, getting you more involved in an area that you know you're already interested in, 
or taking a step back and doing a career assessment and looking at your skills and your values and really talking about um, the Pathways program and how that's going to help guide you through your four years here. All right, so going off of that, uh, the Guaranteed Internship Program is actually what brought us all here today. So how do students participate in the program and what exactly is guaranteed? All right, great question, Lex. So what is guaranteed? We guarantee a stipend to support an unpaid or underpaid internship. And so the Guaranteed Internship Program or funding program um, is really sort of the, the culmination of going through our pathways process. There are some steps to getting the funding. The first thing is we want you to come in and have a meeting with a career counselor. We want to work with you on your resume and have that looked at by a staff member in the office. Um, and then as it relates to social media, making sure you have a LinkedIn profile, that professional presence, having a handshake profile through our office. Um, and then we are also going to ask you to participate in a few career seminars or sessions on interviewing, one on networking, and then coming to any, the third event is anything that's of your choice. So we have career journey speakers where we have alums coming back. In fact, we have one coming up that's um, social justice and policy oriented. We have some in finance, in the arts, in architecture, in the environment, the FBI. So we have all these alums that come back either to campus or this year, many were via Zoom, um, where you can learn from them about their career paths and the organizations that they work for. We also have other career events that you may choose to participate in, in um, including our job shadow program. We've got our career um, tracks that happen over the winter break. And we typically travel to New York, Boston, DC, Los Angeles. Um, this year, they were all virtual, still did them. Um, and then we also have other career programs. We have career fairs in New York City over the winter break that you may want to take part of um, and a whole host of other programs. So that's another component. The other, just like anything else, those of you who play an instrument or you um, play a sport, you practice, right? You practice to get better. And so with interviews, we want you to practice to get better. And so we also require a mock interview as part of our guaranteed internship funding um, process so that you can practice with us and get coached so that you don't freeze up or um, maybe not market yourselves as well as you could in the interview for that dream internship. Um, then there are, if you want to do an internship abroad, there's another step of working with our global ed department and just making sure that the country you want to go to isn't on the State Department's advisory list, because um, obviously we want to ensure everyone's safety. Um, but other than that, it's submitting a resume, cover letter, and a reference sheet. And if you do those things, then you are guaranteed a stipend to support that internship or research. That funding could be during the summer, you could also use it though during the school year. Maybe you have a great internship locally um, and you want your stipend then, or you're studying abroad and your study abroad program has an internship associated with it. You could use your funding then. It's really up to you. Um, you do get one opportunity. Unfortunately, we are not able to fund multiple internships though. Um, and Lex, maybe you, not to put you on the spot, but from a student perspective who's gone through the, the process and, and used the funding, can you talk a little bit about, you know, your feelings about it? Was it something that you felt was challenging or was it, you know, easy to accomplish? Yeah, so actually my first internship um, was my sophomore year. I actually was an intern up in Rochester, New York for Gilda's Club of Rochester, which I had already mentioned at the cancer support group. But unfortunately, the internship was a volunteer only position. So I definitely was not making a salary. And my commute was about an hour and 10 minutes from my house. So I definitely needed gas coverage and stuff. And so that's where I applied for the guaranteed internship. I have friends that have used it for housing purposes and whatnot, but I definitely think that for the transportation costs as well as just kind of my time because it definitely was um, 
pricey going up there and, you know, having to commute every single day. So uh, that's where I use mine toward, but it was an unbelievable experience. And just to keep in mind, when you see internship positions and some of them are volunteer only, still consider using that and kind of do what I did, which is where I put in my money from the guaranteed internship toward because it was an unbelievable experience. And I'm so happy that I did it because I know not getting a salary kind of turns people off sometimes, but it really was, it was amazing. So yeah. Great, thanks Lex. Um, and I just wanted to add with the, the funding piece um, that it can, you know, the internship that you get that is unpaid doesn't have to be uh, full time. So it could be a part-time internship that maybe you're doing 10 to 15 hours a week and getting your funding for that. And then also, especially in the summer, some of our students will have a part-time job. Yeah, so there's definitely a lot of, there's definitely a lot of preparation that goes into um, interviews for internships and preparation for internships and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> um, I guess another question, I know that you had talked about uh, doing the mock interviews and such, but what other support is available from students on campus or from faculty on campus for leading up to an internship? Absolutely. So prepping for those interviews is really important. And that's how we've been spending a lot of our spring is us doing those mock interviews in the office. But I think another invaluable resource are our alums. And so I've got a lot of seniors prepping for interviews and we are connecting them with alums who are working in those organizations and even in the jobs that they have. And so I know that's something that, you know, even Lex, we've reached out and helped make those connections to our recent grads because who better to talk to you about an interview than someone who just went through that process. Um, and so our alums are really taking a lot of time out of their schedules to do those mock interviews and prep you on questions, knowing what areas to focus on, um, I've got a senior who has an interview tomorrow in consulting. And so we reached out to an alum in the Boston office for PwC and was able to get a response almost immediately. Um, and it was a recruiter, ironically, for the company. And so who better to prep you for that interview than someone who does recruitment? And so we're always making those really personalized connections for our students to help them as they are getting ready for those interviews, whether it is for a full-time job or for an internship. Um, so that's another great way for you to prep is using those alums. Um, but we also have software. So some of you, if you have older siblings, especially, you may um, hear them talking about interviews being online. And so whereas, some interviews would be a phone call or in person. A lot of companies are now using a platform called HireVue for these first time interviews. And those can be really awkward because there's no person on the other side of your computer. It is you talking to a camera. Um, and so with that, we want you to prep. And so we've actually bought software that mimics that same type of situation with HireVue so that you can prep and that you can um, practice sort of that uncomfortableness with, with um, interview through interview stream to really help get you ready. And we've got lots of mock interviews set up in their industry specific to help you with that. Justice. Awesome. All right. Yeah, I was just going to say, so before I ask my last question here, uh, we're almost just going to wrap it up to the audience, but I know, Justice, you just came on, but you just want to introduce yourself really quick? Yeah, and I do apologize. Sorry, I had some technical difficulties I've been trying to deal with all morning, and y'all know how Zoom things go. But <laughs> I'll go ahead and introduce myself. Uh, so my name is Justice Bay, currently a sophomore at the colleges right now, um, econ major and entrepreneurial studies minor. I've been working with career services since probably like my second day on campus and they've helped me get to experience a lot of different things such as, firstly, I got to go on a trip last year to New York City where I got to intern, or not intern, but meet a lot of alumni at a lot of different banks across um, Wall Street getting to make connections and build all those kind of connections at a freshman level is kind of not really heard of in a lot of other places. So 
I do appreciate them and everything that they've done for me, including also, you know, resume work, as well as um, just really help me acute or adjust to campus because I'm originally from Dallas, Texas, which is where I'm at right now. And, you know, it's a whole different experience coming from a, a different part of the world, I guess I'd say, or a different part of the country. So you, uh, career services has really helped me, you know, mitigate the process and help me get a lot of different things done going forward. Awesome, so thanks, Justice. Um, so I guess one last question that I have for you, Brandy, is uh, what advice would you offer to um, almost first year students that would make them to make their most out of their college experience? Yeah, I think, you know, it's career services can be an overwhelming sort of thing to think about right now, your first year incoming first years, you haven't even picked a school necessarily yet. And you're trying to um, decide on that. And here we are talking about, you know, what happens after you graduate from college. But I think what's really important is just making the most of the four years that you have. So Lex being a senior, I'm sure can attest to the fact of how fast four years actually go. And so you, you know, before you know it, those four years are gone in a blink of an eye. And so you want to make sure that you've really done all you can to prepare yourself for the career path that you want that's the right one for you. Um, and so get involved, even though it might be scary. I always tell our first year students, coming to a career talk, no one is going to call you out and say, why are you here, right? You can be as passive as a participant as you want as you're building up that confidence. But I think relationships are also really important. And so coming in for that first time appointment, getting to meet your career counselor, um, and it's okay not to know what you want to do. I had no idea what I wanted to do when I went to college. Um, and so I think it's that's what we're here for. I always tell students it's job security, right? That we're here to help guide you through all of that. If you knew how to do all of that, there wouldn't be a career center, you wouldn't need us. Um, and so I think part of the college process is really preparing you for what happens next and make sure you're taking advantage of all of that and really doing all you can do to be prepared um, but make sure that as you're looking at schools, you know, where are the grads going? What are they doing? I'm really excited that HWS just got um, recognized again for return on investment. And I think that a lot of that has to do with the many ways that HWS prepares our grads to be successful and enter the workforce, graduate school, fellowship all of those great things. So I think my best advice to you is just don't wait until your senior year to engage with your career center. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Brandy. Um, I think we do have a message that just came in. So we have a question that came in that said, um, what support is there for international students? Would you mind talking a little bit about that for us? Yeah, absolutely. So we serve all students and we provide lifetime services. So we work with alums as well. So with our international students, there is an international student advisor, Marilyn Unak, and she works closely with our office as we're looking at how to, um, as we help our students get internships um, and job opportunities. So as an international student, obviously there's different regulations and paperwork that needs to be filled out. Um, and so that's where we work hand in hand with Marilyn, the international student advisor, to make sure that all of that is happening. But our international students have internships. We have an inter um, a Finger Lakes internship program right here on campus that runs in, within um, this region. And we have a lot of internships right within walking distance. So transportation um, isn't a concern. So you can stay here on campus. Um, for the summer through that program, there's no charge for housing and then get internship experience. You can also receive the internship stipend because it is paid through Hobart and William Smith and it's an award. It doesn't count as off campus earnings. Um, and so I think, you know, I'm happy to answer more specific questions, but please know that we do support all of our students with opportunities. Um, and then even our career network has alums that are from all over the world that are volunteers and um, are helping to work with our students. 
Awesome. So we actually got another question in um, for internships regarding publishing. Is there an area where HWS has alums or something the career office the career office can find to help? Sure. So I think it depends what area of publishing you're interested in, but we have an alum who was the um, the editor for like the auto review section um, for the Los Angeles Times. We have an alum who is actually in human resources for the Washington Post. Condé Nast is another place for alums go. Um, the New Yorker, Dorothy Wickenden is the editor. We've got a, you know, she's great alumna. Um, and we have alums who are writers for that. Bloomberg, if you're more interested in news or CNN and certainly all of um, Fox and networks, we've got alums at all of those. So it really depends what part you want to be in or if you're thinking more of a publishing house like um, Penguin, Random House, all of those, we certainly have alums and opportunities. there. So another way, just going off of that too, um, another way that I found a lot of connections is also uh, LinkedIn. So for those of you who don't know, it's a free social media app where you just basically create a profile. It's all professional. It's similar to Handshake that we use here on campus. Um, but yeah, my LinkedIn, you actually can find mutual alums from certain areas. There's so many ways that you can filter and find someone just like you or just in the career that you're going into. Um, and so that's how I made a lot of connections too. So I highly recommend making a LinkedIn. You can even do it your first year here on campus. You just need enough information to pull from your resume to make it, you know, kind of cohesive. And then just feel free to reach out. And then other students too, we back each other up all the time. So we will, you know, reach out, congratulate you, share your posts, whatever it is. So we're all just here for the same reason. We all want to be employed by the end of the year. So, <laughs> so just going off of that. But can, can um, that another question that came in. Oh, yeah, I, just want, I just wanted to add some more additional input onto that. For me, uh, I made my LinkedIn last year and it's grown substantially over the course of just one year being here at HWS. And you got to, one thing I learned that is that you have to be, um, you, you have to not be afraid to like make those cold calls or more along the lines of cold emails, just because, just because you might be intimidated by who the person is or what they do. Don't let that stop you from making that connection that could possibly help you get to where you want to be. And just as yeah, you mentioned what you're doing this summer. Oh, yeah. And as an extension, as I was talking about uh, the banking trip I got to do last summer, because of that trip, doing the same methods I was just talking about before, I was actually able to leverage my way into an internship at Citibank this summer. So I just want for that to be an example for you guys to just definitely use the resources you have and network as much as possible. Thank you. That's awesome. Where's the location, Justice? Unfortunately, uh, right here on my computer, so. Oh, no. Okay. So going off of that, though, Justice, that's a good segue. How has the pandemic impacted students networking and internship opportunities? Yeah, I think, you know, Justice is a great example of that, right? Like Citibank would typically have a big incoming in-person cohort of students. Um, but organizations have been able to pivot, which I think is, you know, really great. Instead of eliminating programs, they just have them now that are remote. So Justice will still be looking at those same four walls all summer long, um, but getting great experience that will hopefully lead to his junior year internship that will lead to a job offer at the end of it. Um, so I think the pandemic, it, employers last summer, we saw our, they kept the hires, they didn't um, rescind offers for full-time positions, but they rescinded a lot of internship offers last summer. This summer, we're seeing so many more internship opportunities being made available remote. Um, employers have figured out how to do that and do it well. And so we have lots of students interning, um, which can be convenient if you want to be in New York City, like City is in New York City, Justice doesn't have to worry about finding an apartment, roommates, or anything like that. He's got his place to live in, can still have that great experience. Um, but in addition, employers have also recruiters, instead of traveling to schools, or the, you know, they can't get to every school, 
they've really re learned how to leverage technology. And so these info sessions with big banks or with nonprofit organizations that students have much more access than they've had in the past to all different kinds of employers. Um, in addition, I think people just are on their computers all the time. And so having those email conversations, setting up a Zoom call is so much easier than it ever has been. Yeah, so another thing just to add here too is especially with the pandemic and everything, people have been going online for literally everything. So cold, call, cold calls that I never thought that I would have to make, I've had to make. Emails that I never thought that I'd be able to send, I'm a professional now. So definitely take advantage of this. If you guys want to reach out to Justice or I, like I didn't have this when I was coming into the colleges to be able to reach out to a mentor. So definitely take advantage of it. We will drop our emails into the chat. So you can do that, or you could also contact admissions as well for our information. Um, but for, I think, let me check here. I think we have one last question for today's session. Um, other than internships, what other activities uh, should they be adding to their resumes before graduation? Sure, before, um, I think getting involved in the Geneva community is really important. And in Lex, no one better to speak about Cecil, our Center for um, Civic Engagement Service Learning than you. Um, but there's so many ways to get to know the community that's going to be your home for the next four years. So I think that's really important. And we also have, you know, hundreds of clubs and organizations that you can be a part of. And so if it's something, we do a big expo, like a big fair where every club and organization is out on the quad and you can walk around and talk to people and learn about what their organization is. You can sign up for their listserv so that you know when their meetings are. Um, so I think really engaging and not feeling like you need to be a part of 20 different things, right? Quality over quantity <laughs> doesn't, you know, we don't want a big laundry list, but some things that are really going to help you grow and develop and maybe challenge yourself in a little bit different ways than you have from when you were in high school, or maybe you always wanted to, um, I don't know, do kayaking or water rafting. Like we have an ORAP, an outdoor club that you could join and sign up and, and participate in outdoor activities. Or we've got equestrian club. We've got one for physics where I just met with a senior and I don't know how he missed this, but our um, they design, it's part of this, um, part of like a rocket and you can get selected by NASA and it gets sent up into space. And so our students are able to participate in that. So if you have that type of interest, um, there's really something here for everybody. And we just had a group of students who thought, you know what, we're women in economics and we want more women in the economics department in this major. So they, they formed the Society for Women in Economics. Like they were able to just start that club up this year they meet weekly, they have all kinds of alums that come in and speak. And so I think it's a great opportunity if there's something out there that you want that you're not seeing offered elsewhere, then make it happen. And I think our student activities office is really supportive of that. Yeah, and if I can just chime in there, I definitely think, yeah, try to get involved on campus as much as you can. Well, with what we can do right now with the pandemic going on. But for me, I just know that going into any job, honestly, no matter where you go, going up further, you're gonna to need to be able to socialize with people and stuff like that. And going out early, as soon as you get on campus and stuff like that, make sure you meet, you can meet everybody that you need to meet in terms of you know friends, networking, because you never know what the person next to you is gonna be doing in the next five years. So just try to network and connect with as many people as possible because you know, you're only gonna be in college once. Make the most out of it and for me personally, like I picked up poetry and I never written, like I never written anything a day in my life before I went to college. So you never know what you'll find interesting. How about yeah, you? Actually, Did you reflect back on your four years. Oh, absolutely. Actually, how funny you said, you know, quality, quality over quantity. So when I had first come to the colleges, I am not kidding you guys. I signed up for like eight to 10 clubs and I was going crazy because I was attending at least one a week, almost two to three weeks. So it was getting way too much. So then, as I mentioned before, um, the Geneva Heroes Club, which is another one that you can give through the Center for Community Engagement. Um, it's 
a fantastic club to be a mentor to a Geneva high school or middle school student. So I became involved in that my freshman year and fell in love with it so much that I actually became a coordinator for the next three years following. So I love it so much. It really is amazing. And it honestly changed my life because the mentorship that you have with those students is unreal. And then going to restaurants or even like coffee shops, I run into them all the time and they come running to me and hugging me. So it's definitely an amazing thing. Really, it's true. Quality over quantity. <laughs> And one last, last thing before I go, uh, I definitely agree. I think giving back, you know, is it's a very core principle of mine as well. So just make sure like, if you have the opportunity, give back to like the communities around you because like you get different opportunities and you got to think about the time that people poured into you for sure. So if you get the opportunity to do something like that, I'd say definitely do it. Yeah, so I just put my email below, Justice, if you want to follow me and put your emails. Um, yeah, I think that's all that we have for today. But thank you so much to everybody for attending this. Hopefully this was beneficial to you guys. Feel free to reach out to us. And best of luck with you guys as you make your final decision. That's huge. So congratulations again. Yes, thank you. We hope to see you here in the fall for sure. Our office is right up against the quad, so it's easy to find. So um, best of luck to all of you.